I'm not a will. I'm not like, I want to bungee jump and I want to, like, I can stay on the ground and have fun. That's fine by me. Hi, Team Vogue. It's Naomi Scott, and I'm going to tell you some of my firsts. First song I sang in public. I know this one. Don't speak. I know just what you're saying. That's all the words I remember. Because we had this, like, thing called Wanna Sing, Gonna Sing. <laughs> it was like a summer camp thing that was like, you know, you learn a song for a week and then you get to perform it at the end. And I think I was 11. Yeah, and it was Don't Speak. And then I, and then I think the second time round I did say a little prayer, Aretha Franklin. So ambitious. Alex Khan, gotta love her. She was our vocal teacher, vocal coach, whatever you call it. She pushed me to sing that song and she was like, no, no, I know you can do it. And I think that was actually the first time that I really kind of thought, oh, okay, yeah, I enjoy this, I could do this. Ah, my first date with my husband. We actually went to see Iron Man 2. I don't remember anything about the movie, which tells you that it was a good date, right? Um, I was so nervous, and that was that. That was the beginning, and here we are, married. My first celebrity crush. Oh my gosh, this is so random, yes. Okay, in Coach Carter, the kid that's got like the big hair that stands up and is like, our greatest fear is that we are inadequate. And he like gives the speech. Do you, did anyone watch that? Just me? Coach Carter, big movie. Love that movie. Yeah, I did have a crush on him because he was like bad but good. You know, that whole struggle. Oh, I loved it. Oh, Aladdin, of course. Ha <laughs> ha. Aladdin, he's just cheeky, isn't he? Like it's all very well being a prince, like cool, but you don't really know how to like really be in a situation that's hard and where you have to improvise, you know? So my guy knows how to kind of maneuver his way around. First audition for Jasmine. I had one scene, she's kind of dressing down the Prince Anders character. That scene didn't end up being in the movie as it was in the audition. She was kind of having fun with him, like, because she was so much smarter than he, he is in the, in the scene. I was like, oh, okay, I like where this is headed. And then I think it was when we actually, when I worked with Guy in the screen test, I really enjoyed that process and I really enjoyed kind of just the way that we communicated with each other. I think it was very easy. His direction was just so practical and I actually understood, you know, as opposed to like, so you're a tree and you really, you know, like none of that. It was just like, uh, do a bit faster. And I was like, know how to do that. The first time I heard I was Jasmine, I was asleep. I knew we were gonna get the call soon. At that point, like everyone was feeling good. Actually, my agent called my husband, uh, who was still awake. And uh, so he, he woke me up and he was like, just gave me the phone and I was, I was a bit disorientated. And then, you know, they told me the news and I think it was more of a like relief. So I was like, oh, and I probably like, went to sleep and then woke up and was like, oh my gosh, was that was that a dream? Did it really happen? It did happen. Dreams do come true. Oh, first time meeting Will Smith was, we had like this gym facility. So I, I had a shower, I had a towel on my head, I had no makeup on. Because everyone was like, Will's coming today, Will's coming today, Will's, Will, Will Smith's coming today. Will's... And um, so everyone knew, everyone was like on edge. And so I was kind of g myself up to just be like forward, but like chill. But like I was kind of doing all these balances in my head, <laughs> like walked out saw him doing like laps and I was like okay cool like just like just go for it so I was like well <laughs> and he was so far away from me and I was like I was like okay now you've just got to walk over to him with this towel on your head so then I was just like walking over and it was just such a long walk I should have waited until I was at least like halfway to him because I was just kind of like so then I had to like really walk and then I was kind of running he was probably like scary and then I got to him and I was like, hey, like, I was like, Princess Jasmine, like, just being so weird. <laughs> Will is basically, will never make you feel like you're being weird. Like, he has time to talk to anybody. He will talk, like, you have to pull him away. I remember one time, we were in Paris, and we'd just done a press conference, and Will decided that after, and this is, like, why I adore him so much, because he's just still so, he's not jaded in any way. So we came out, and he wanted to have, like, a regroup with me, with Mina and I, to be like, how are you guys feeling? Because he's always looking after us, always giving us advice. Just seeing how we were, but, like, decided to do it in the corridor where all the press were coming out. And I was, like, sitting there, and I'm thinking, like, because everyone's going, Will, Will, you know, trying to, like, that was my French accent, did you hear it? It's really bad. You know, he talks to everyone and I'm like, you've forgotten your Will Smith. Like, we need to, I was like, should we go somewhere else? So we're all by like the rowing machine at this point. Guy Ritchie comes over. I'm kind of like, 
you know. And then it was just a very surreal moment. Afterwards, I was like, whew, I got that over and done with. But then the second time was just as bad. Do you know what I mean? First time on the magic carpet, I think it's one of those things where it's like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is gonna be magical. After five minutes, your ankles are like, this is not magical. And you're like harnessed in. But it's kind of like this foam thing and it's got lots of prods and it kind of does this and it, it bends side to side. And you have wind blowing in your face. I got stuff in my eye. Like it's just like one of those things that just looks so romantic but really isn't when you're up there. But having said that, as hard as it was, as tough as it kind of was up there, when the song played, you, you're transported to that kind of magical moment. And then as soon as they call cut, you're like, whoa, get me off here. Mina's had the worst shoes as well. Cause you know, he has those pointy shoes. And so his poor ankles, it was literally like the worst for him. I felt so bad for him. Bend It Like Beckham made such an impact on me because it was a Indian girl who played football, I loved football, who lived in Hounslow, I lived in Hounslow, so the movie was me, basically. Yeah, it was just incredible to see someone, it was specificity that was so, that related to me. When, when it's like few and far between, in terms of like, whether that's a female character that's kind of badass or, sh or has, you know, moves forward their own narrative in some way, I think as a child, you latch onto that so much because they're very few and far between. You know, when we look at the, the Disney princesses and how iconic they were and what went before, like, no, we need to rethink this a little bit and how can we now present what a young heroine looks like now, you know, and how we can kind of give that same feeling to more different types of girls, around, you know, around the world and um, different cultures. And it's so important. Oh, my first pet. Unfortunately, we didn't really have pets growing up because uh, my mom apparently is allergic to everything, which I actually don't believe. I just think she doesn't want pets. And I'm actually allergic to dogs as well, which is really sad. And uh, yeah, Indians don't really have pets either. It's not really a thing for us. Yeah, my mum never had pets growing up, although in her backyard growing up in Uganda, she had like all sorts, she had like, you know, Hippos, I'm kind of just saying that, but I think there were some very wild animals just hanging out in her backyard. And then my dad had a, had a dog growing up, you know, a very English kind of thing, so, but not us, unfortunately. Yes, my first kiss was in an audition, and it was so awkward because, you know when you like miss the mouth pretty much, because you both like go in eyes shut or something, and like, so it's the side of the mouth, and then like, you're just latching onto the side of the mouth. It was so bad. Oh my gosh, so awks, so awks. And that was like way, way, way back. That may even have been my first kiss. It's fine, I was like, oh, good, got that out of the way. <laughs> now I can go back at school and be like, ah, oh, kiss someone. My first time meeting a famous person. I wrote this, a song, and I was like 17, 18. And someone, I don't know how, but someone was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna send this to John Legend, like he's my friend. I was like, sure. So he sent it to John Legend, who I was a massive fan of. And so I got this email from John Legend being like, oh my gosh, this is great. You know, just really inspiring, like keep going. You're really talented, like so sweet. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I immediately replied with, and I remember this distinctly, I just went, John, <laughs> with all of these O's. And then like months later, I went back to LA and um, the guy that had kind of sent the email, he was like, oh, uh, John said he never heard back from you. Uh, you know, cause, and then I got, I was on a show at the time and he was like, oh, he probably was like, oh, she's just like, got on a show now, she's too big time. I was like, no, I was like, I did email back. And literally I never found the email. And um, it's so sad, but one of these days I'm gonna be like, yo, I emailed you back. I did email you back. And I was just like, I don't believe it. I was like, you have to tell him. Oh, I do remember my first red carpet. It was actually a yellow carpet, a lemonade mouth. I really wanted to wear these black tights with open toe beige shoes. I remember my manager being like, I think they look good like without. And I was like, no, 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 like, this is like the style. And from this day, like literally up till this day, my husband does not let me forget it. I don't have a bucket list, guys, I'm sorry. Does anyone here have a bucket list? Tell me, please. Um, I'd like to go to New Zealand, quite honestly, because when I used to watch Lord of the Rings, I thought, oh, it's really pretty there. I need to learn how to cook Indian food better. My husband's probably like, amen. What else? Oh, like get ri getting rid of the eczema once and for all. Gut health, everyone. 
I don't like to be like too specific as if that thing is gonna then like make me fulfilled in some way. Yeah.